Asian Network. First this evening to Bangladesh, where another atheist blogger has been killed by suspected Islamist militants. Neil O'Neill was known for his secular and atheist views. He was from a Hindu background. According to a Bangladeshi newspaper, The Daily Star, the local branch of Al-Qaeda has claimed responsibility for the murder. It's one of several similar murders this year. Nikesh Raghani has been looking at those cases. This is the fourth time a blogger has been killed in Bangladesh in recent times and the majority of the public there are calling for an end to it. Nil O'Neill was known for his secular and atheist views and from a Hindu background rather than Muslim. Police say he was hacked to death by suspected Islamist militants. Our reporter Akbar Hussain is in Dhaka. He was known for criticizing different religion in his Facebook account and in different blogs. He was also known for criticizing Islamic norms and customs on different locations. And bloggers in Bangladesh say that uh, Nil O'Neill, he was targeted by extremist Islamic groups. Some fellow bloggers, though, have described Nil O'Neill as an anti-extremist voice of reason. Imran Sarkar is the head of the Bangladesh Blogger and Activist Network. Who was uh, the boy uh, against the uh, fundamentalism and extremism, and even he was uh, the boy for uh, minority rights, especially women's rights, uh, and uh, the rights of the indigenous people. He was writing in the blogs, and he was also an activist. Uh, he has been killed and uh, in his residence. Four or, uh, or five men uh, entered in his uh, place in his house, and uh, they just killed him with messages. All four men killed so far were on a list of 84 atheist bloggers drawn up by Islamic groups in 2013 and widely circulated. The list was originally submitted to the government with the aim of having the bloggers arrested and tried for blasphemy. The group which wanted the bloggers arrested told the BBC they have no knowledge of who's behind the killings. Avijit Roy was one of the bloggers killed a few months ago. He was known for tackling issues such as homosexuality. His father is pleading with the government to be more firm when when dealing with militants. This Bangladesh that was earned by the blood sacrifice of the martyrs has now turned into a den of militants. I demand that the government immediately stops militant activities. In May, secular blogger Ananda Bijoy Das was also killed by masked men with machetes in Silet. He was said to have received death threats from Islamist extremists. In March, another blogger, Washiko Rahman, was hacked to death in Dhaka. These people in Bangladesh's capital have had enough. As a human being, we have a right to express our opinion. But there are people who think that criticizing religion is not justified. People who are narrow-minded, they think expressing different views regarding religion is a crime. We have seen this sort of incident in the past. This murder happened as no one has been punished in the past for similar crimes. A group of people are targeting bloggers and writers who are giving different opinions regarding religion. Nikesh Raghani looking at the murders of Bangladeshi bloggers there. Well, what about others who may be on that list for writing about religion? Do they feel protected? Earlier, I spoke to Arif Rahman, who lives here in London. He and Niloy had been friends for six years. He told me how he felt when he heard the news this morning. I definitely froze um, and I, I still have, the, have that feeling in my body, that feeling of, of absolute chill. We've heard today that Niloy was worried about his security. Were you aware of this? Uh, yes. Uh, along with Niloy, we were worried about a lot of other uh, bloggers in Bangladesh. Um, so he himself was quite quite worried about it and he um, saw people following him uh, when he was coming back from a protest event uh, of another blogger who was murdered earlier this year. And uh, then he went to the police. The police uh, gave him the long run and asked, said to him that your uh, residential address doesn't fall into our jurisdiction, so go to this other police station. And then he added, saying that you need to leave the country because you're not safe. We can't guarantee your safety. So he ended up, he, I don't think he could, could not even in, uh, you know, file, a, file a case about his safety. And has anything like that happened to you where you've been worried about your security as well? Back in 2013 when uh, there was a secular uprising in Bangladesh, uh, the Islamists tried to foil it by uh, uh, kind of raising a straw man uh, thing saying that uh, some of the uh, secular uprising organizers are actually atheists and they say 
as you say, derogatory comments about Islam. And then they uh, went on for a massive campaign against, and then they started killing people. So I was afraid because my name was being circulated as well. And uh, went to the police. Uh, it was quite a quite a weird experience. Why was it weird? Because um, nobody knew what, what I was talking about. Only a couple of months ago, they kind of realized what, what it is about. And they called me and said, you know, we need to make sure you are safe. And so they visited us and um, tried to, you know, ensure my security. But then if I'm, if my security is not ensured in the UK, I mean, it's not only me, there are a lot of other people who would be in similar situation. Now, Niloy had made some derogatory remarks about religion, specifically about Islamic practices in a majority Muslim country. So how did he defend that? I don't know why we need to defend uh, comments um, because although Saudi Arabia wants the world to be passing blasphemy law, uh, criminalizing uh, defamation of religion. It's not the case at the moment, and I don't think it will happen as long as uh, UN uh, Charter Article 19 is there, because that gives per people to actually do exactly the same thing, make comments and, and freedom of speech. So he doesn't need to defend it. Um, it's the people who's killing people for making the comments. Uh, those are the ones we should be asking the questions, why you're doing this and when you're going to stop. Now, what's your hope for bloggers and writers like yourself to be able to have freedom of expression going forward? We are obviously definitely worried about it because um, it's not only the Islamists that are uh, cherry picking us and then killing us, but also government is completely turning a blind eye to this thing. And um, it's been almost two years when the first killing took place. Nothing has been done. Not a single arrest has been made by the government. Bystanders caught some of them and handed them to the police. And if we ask the government, um, we hear that, you know, as you said, uh, they made derogatory comments about Islam, so we can't protect them. So, yeah, Bangladesh is, is, is in a very bad, bad situation in that sense.